survive for contact. The following program is for adults only. Parental guidance is suggested. In other words, we're gonna be fucking swearing and talking about fucked up shit. Get your goddamn kids away! Leave me alone! Mr. Cook, Mr. Cook, Mr. Cook, Mr. Cook, Mr. Cook. Here, go ahead. Who exactly are you and why should we care that your band broke up? Actually, that's a really great point. Uh, hi, Zah, I'm looking for Mr. Cooks. Yeah, I got some truckloads of anger and resentment. Where do you want it? Uh, throw it in the lake. I can't carry it anymore. Sean Rushmore here. You know, this may surprise some of you, but I am sad the Atomic Disasters broke up. I really like the song Pig Picking. There is nothing more American than picking up fat chicks and fucking them with barbecue sauce. Rushmore, you're an idiot. Dusty, what do you want, you hemphead? Pig Picking was literally about poop party. It was the first real way collaboration of Jim and Ed. It'd be really good to know this. <laughs> oh, Dusty, it's okay. Come here, have a hug, you dumb hippie. <laughs> I'm going to kill your bandmates' pets and make you watch. Then blame it on you. Just think. Lawsuits. Public shaming. You'll have to move. <laughs> Who are you? William Patterson stalked your cats. Why? Honestly, Jim, I, I really hated your films so much. Bring me the fluffy dog first. No! Hey guys, uh, this is Jim Cook. Bands break up, it sucks. I just want to take this opportunity to uh, thank uh, Jimmy Riani, Courtney Panic, and the one and only Anthony Vanilla for our time together as the Atomic Disasters. Like, to always thank the Clash Bar, uh, the great bands we got to play with, and uh, all our friends who came out to see us. I wish my uh, bandmates from the bottom of my heart the best of luck in all their future endeavors. And now to lighten the mood, here's something just really stupid. The cow says. The duck says. Cthulhu says. Hey, this is Allie from Dumb Rock Thoughts. That's the name of my blog. I wrote this week about Greta Van Fleet. They sound like Led Zeppelin. I'll just get right to the point. Um, and people are really upset about that. It just really angers people when a band comes out that sounds like Led Zeppelin. This has always been amusing to me that that happened. So I looked into that a little bit. I listened to the band and uh, sure enough, they do. They have the same instrumentation as Led Zeppelin. Uh, clearly not the same guys. <laughs> clearly not the same fashion, for better or for worse. People are really upset that they're kind of hedging in on this Led Zeppelin territory, and other people are thinking, well, you know, maybe this is okay, maybe it's a good thing that these young kids are making a living and winning Grammys and going on world tours, and they're actually playing rock instruments in a original rock band. So I wanted to look into this a little bit and find out why people are so upset, why this is such a divisive issue. I've been watching some controversy on social media about it, and decided to throw my my hat in the ring. So you can check me out at dumbrockthoughts.blogspot.com. I write about all things rock and roll, all things completely inconsequential, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, so put another dime in the jukebox, baby, is the name of the blog. You can check that out there. I play guitar. You can find me in 6-8 Mathematics. You can find me in the Strip Down Aces. I gotta go, because it's whiskey o'clock. Hi, this is Nella, and you're listening to Cult of Contempt. I love to worship Bill's cock. What's up, everybody? Hey, it's us. We're back. Here we are. Hey, guys. Back in space. I got a new tie. It's shiny. We're all over the place this week. 
This week has been, probably the last two weeks have been fucking crazy. Yeah, well, did, did everybody keeps telling me Mercury's in retrograde. Mercury's oh, what's going in on? retrograde. Oh my god, it's absolutely what's going on. Oh, man. So, do you believe that kind be... of stuff, the astrology? No. I I think I'm just fueled by rage constantly. <laughs> <laughs> just an undying rage. You know, I don't know if I believe in astrology, but I, I always notice when there's a harvest moon or a really good full moon, like... Like a really nice Star Wars looking moon. Um, that, you know, like people act fucking weird that day. Or maybe it's just superstition or I'm looking for it. Hey, but. wolf moon! <laughs> hey, wolf moon! You guys like typo negative? Not really. That's the best kind of moon. Isn't that the guy's like, I fucked your girlfriend and you were sleeping and I, she liked it and she called me dead. I fucked your girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, I was like, that guy's an asshole. I don't know what this is, but, uh, Hey, wolf moon. <laughs> oh god. Did we did, they did a cover of something that I liked. They had a very acrimonious breakup when yeah. he died. Yeah. But, oh no, sure. not really. Did you ever listen to the previous band they were in? Carnivore? Yeah. Yeah, Carnivore's the shit. That's They're just back crazy. Yeah, they are. They're back, back now. No, but it's horrible. Because they is. have a fake Peter Steele and that's yeah. like like a goth guy that's not quite as tall and his dick's <laughs> not quite as big and girthy. And he's just not as good. And he's like, he looks like a poser. Like, I would rather they got like a midget with a real deep voice. I would love that. Yeah. But I mean, you're never going to see Carnivore again. I think if you have a heart on for Carnivore, they said some fucked up shit though in their fucking lyrics, man. Are you familiar with the music of Carnivore? Uh, yeah, okay. So when you lived in Sussex County and you didn't have a car, <laughs> you had to make some concessions. I hung out with this really weird guy. Named Brian Petrosoni, who loved what he called grindcore. Did he have a car? <laughs> and he had a car. And he worked at ShopRite, which was mostly my social scene. I didn't really hang out with too many people from high school. Lee was the exception to the rule. Hmm. Um, you know, so, like, I would go places with this guy. He always had to. And he was so weird. He would run over roadkill on purpose and he'd go, whoop! And now he's like, he's in a cover band called Sabbath and Black. They played the Clash Bar a couple times. So I ran into him, and uh, yeah, he's he's this crazy dude. Nice. And uh, so yes, Carnivore. I don't remember them as much. I think he was more into um, Napalm Death, Cannibal Corpse. Oh uh, yeah. Um, there was one other one. Entombed was a big one for him. And there was this one band that had like all these ugly medical things on their record, like big tumors and shit. It was gross. I couldn't. Oh, that's it. very appealing. That would make me want. Obituary, to I think, was the name of the group. Oh, purchase. obituary. Yeah, that that makes me want to purchase that record. If you have all those records and you're probably like angry and living in your mom's basement, but I saw a study this week that said actually that heavy metal apart. fans are actually the happiest. Really? That most of them are well adjusted. So thank you, metal fans. That's Maybe that's why I'm not well adjusted anymore because like I'm just. Not listening to metal. You have to get back to the metal. All right. I don't know. I yeah, can't. you have to listen to Holy Diver! <laughs> You've been out too long in the midnight sea! <laughs> or, uh, you know, By Moonlight, <laughs> we ride 10,000 side by side! This You're into awesome. the deal, huh? <laughs> no, that's, well, that was Manowar. Oh, that was Manowar, yeah. But yeah oh, I only had a fight in the world. I, I know. Fight in the world! <laughs> Chance to play fighting the world every single day. That's just so Kids cheesy. Of metal. Yeah, I love, cheesy. I love that. I love, fucking love that war. <laughs> the world star. That was one of the only really records I think I took back from my wife. <laughs> the divorce was Man of War. Oh, I, I can't. I can't split with Allie because I, I don't want. I don't want to break up the CD collection <laughs> ever. So what happened with your band, man? Where's that off limits? Um, people were unhappy and we broke up, and that's all I have to say about that. Okay. Yeah. Are you? And that's the bottom line, cause Jim Cook said so. Do you think you guys will ever get back together again, or probably never? Or? Uh, no, nothing in the near future. I don't know. Okay. Uh, as my friend Jake Burns once told me, wait and see. But I don't know. I need some. I need some time to figure some things out and sort some things out. And it's like a like an emotional breakup. Like you guys are all hurting and shit, right? Or what? 
Um, I don't know. I can't speak for anybody else. Like I said on the on the thing, uh, breakups suck. It hurts. Yeah. That was cathartic to do something silly, but you know, it was like eating a cookie. It lasted a little while, but I don't know. I mean, no, I'm bummed. I mean, these guys were my family, and you know, families fight, but you know, I don't know. I I don't I don't want to name call. I don't want to drag anybody's name through the mud. I just want to get my head right. Right. Because my wife's going into surgery, and my head's not right. And if you're in a situation that's not making your head right, you gotta get the fuck out of that situation. Word up. And you know. A lot of people think mental health is an excuse, but you know, it's oh, no. it's a reality. It is it is an illness, and you know. Um, no, I think it's perfectly valid for you to ask for your wants and needs. That's what we should all do, and it's perfectly valid to draw boundaries with people. And a yeah, lot of people don't not, like that. Sometimes shit, you, you just gotta step back and step back, not take things so seriously. Yeah. That one bit about the truckload of anger and resentment is just like. I don't know, I'm always like keeping score. I think I spent my whole life trying to be right and not trying to be happy. And sometimes uh, being right and being happy are on opposite sides of the planet. And these are the kind of things I'm working on. I don't know, I might just walk in the desert and uh, just do some peyote and figure things out. If you walk in the desert, you're gonna get eaten by a fucking coyote (laughs) and die, so. The other option is, and I mentioned this to you in jest, and you took it really seriously, but I think what I wanna do is just get a bunch of pills, I don't even care what they are, and a a bunch of vodka, and then just like wear fishnets, and then just perform at the Clash Bar, like once a month, and then just hang out there and be like a weirdo. I think the Clash Bar has been missing buzz, I, and I think this is an opportunity think, for me to I fill the think, role. No, I, I don't think. I say you, go for it. I don't think you could fill those stilettos. I don't friend. see how this could go wrong. <laughs> all right, all right, fine. We're being honest. Like, listen. Uh, how are you going to top yourself after that? I, th- I feel like I'm the next buzz already by showing up there in pajamas and almost like a, an anti-buzz buzz and playing songs where I'm not asked to play and just harassing the people around the bar and singing about so, whatever they're talking it's about. It's like a punk rock Andy Warhol or something. Um, so let me get this straight. The anti-buzz buzz doesn't think I have enough buzz to be the new buzz. I think I don't think <laughs> there will ever be a new buzz. Right, exactly. You can't repeat yeah, that. That's, that's like, will there ever be a new Ozzy Osbourne once he kicks the bucket? I'm not going to say, I'm not going to show up and be like, hi, I'm buzz. It's going to be like filling the void. Like, yeah, but now that you like, put that out there in the universe, then it's like, People are going to be like, oh, what's he going to do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably nothing. I don't know. Not all my, not all my grand ideas ever come to Lindsay fruition. Lindsay Decker is going to be like, when's Jim going to do this? <laughs> yeah. You know, she's at home like, I want to hear about some of Paul's bands. Oh, I got a good band break. <laughs> it's not even really. It's, it's like, like a, a down. It's a very absurd story. But, um. Okay. So, one of my friends is fucking, he's an awesome musician, he's in a band called Gathering and None, he's fucking, and he was in the, the band Blitzkid, and they're like, a Gathering and None is like, I, I call it just a great rock band, like, right. uh, Blitzkid's kind of like a horror punk band, so, he was in that, in Blitzkid for a long time, and he, he ended up joining this band, Megora, from Rhode Island, so, it's like, oh, that's cool, you know, like, you come he brought them like around that tour and like they kind of went out and did some stuff and like I, I would say they had a good record the, the record I heard from them when he was in the band was very good awesome and and I was like oh this is cool like I'll check this out and then uh he had to leave the band to go on tour with Blitzkid so I was like they asked me to fill in for him okay so I was like ah okay I'll do that. That's, I can't fill his shoes at all. He's a fucking amazing guitar player and singer. And I'm like, uh, maybe 50% of him on guitar and maybe 70% of him singing. Like, I could do <laughs> that amount of stuff. Uh-huh. And uh, so I go out to Rhode Island. I take a fucking train or something out there. And uh, the... It's like a whole weird situation because his, like, uh, he got the trailer for the tour. I was going out there to rehearse one day with them, and the guy that was supposed to originally replace my friend went out there, and he, he drove, it was his trailer we were taking on tour. Okay. So he brought the trailer out. 
drove up to the guy's house, and the guy's like, yo, dude, uh, like, don't make out with my, my bass player, which happened to be a 16-year-old girl at the time. <laughs> so that dude that <laughs> dropped the trailer off was like, this is... This is a very unsettling vibe. Like, why is somebody telling me not to make out with a sixteen-year-old? Like, yeah, really, it's like a really weird thing. So <laughs> he's like, you know what? Like, you could just take my trailer. He's like, I'm gonna book it. I'm gonna head back to. Uh, I can't do this. So it's kind of like when a restaurant has a sign. It happened once, so he, you know, he just. Well, no. So, <laughs> so that guy left. So I ended up being the replacement replacement mm-hmm. for that guy who who booked. And I get there and like the same like weird. Shit, but I'm just like, yeah, whatever. I don't, I don't know these people. I just want to fucking play these couple shows and do this thing. Mm-hmm. So, the fucking. Apparently, the guy that was like the singer of the band is like making out with the 16 year old girl. Like, that's where this story goes. But the guy that made the band really good that I got to replace eventually left the band and like was like, hey, I'm starting my own band. So, the dude from the. the the other band, the, the pedo rest guy, I actually statutory rapist, I think is the oh term. Oh my god. Alleged. Um, fucking like he would message all of us like if my friend posted like, hey, check out my band, you know it's, I would share it, whatever, like I share all my friend's shit like right. pretty liberally, you know Right. and he, he sent me like a message like Oh, you like that faggot shit? Da 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 da. Like, oh my God. that guy's a piece of shit. You're a fucking asshole. Like, you have the wrong <laughs> friends. What? He just goes, and like, anybody that shares this other dude's band, like, just goes out, like, you're a fucking piece of shit. You're a prick. I hope you die. Oh Fuck my you. God. Like, he's just like a miserable little troll. Uh, <laughs> that's, yeah, and, like, that's what I think about. Like, when I think about band breakups, like, you're. You know, your shit, it's not like that. Like, everybody's decent. In, in this, it was like fucking just everybody's trying to backstab everybody. Oh everybody's God. trying to fucking undercut everybody. It's like, it's absurd. Um, and I would say, like, I, I don't know. I always felt bad about the breakup of the ecstatics, but it was like, I was just a very angry person. You were in the ecstatics? I was the singer of the ecstatics. I didn't even know that, but I know I've seen you. <laughs> yeah, we were a great rock and roll band. A great rock and roll band. And, but, like, I was, uh... Did you guys play the, uh, the underpass at all? That, that, dump, that dump in Elmo Park on X61? I, I don't think so. We played the city a lot. I, I know I heard that name. E-X-S-T-A... Yeah, yeah, yeah. T-I-C-S, yeah. We, um... Yeah, we were in that band. No, I... We played, like, a bunch, but I was, like, on, uh, Enbrel at the time, like, for my psoriasis, my arthritis, and I was, like, 130 pounds, like, I just thought, I, I figured I was just gonna die, like, any day, just, like, waste away, yeah. and so, like, my attitude really reflected that, in like, the, the shit I would say, somehow worse, um... You know, like, I was, I was, like, if you think I'm, like, fucking psychotic and miserable now, you should have known me, like, nine years ago. Wow. Like, I was, or eight years ago, I was, like, out of my mind. Wow. And I always felt bad about the way I handled it, but the way that ended up working out was, like, three of the guys in the band started the Chief Vibes, which is, like, a great oh, rock and roll band. I've seen them. Yeah, I, they play, all, like, around here a lot. Um... And Cheap Vibes. They have a girl in the band? No. That's no, true. that was... Okay, never mind. Cheap Vibes. I know I've seen them too, but it's not coming to me. But I may have actually played with them. I think you did play with them, definitely. At the Clash Bar? Yeah. I remember liking... I gotta start keeping a notebook, because I remember liking a band and then... The Cheap Vibes got, like, a singer. Um, they had a... I think they had another singer first. Some uh-huh. other guy. He has a big, goofy Pollock. Um, and then they got this dude, Bill, who's, like, fucking awesome. He's, he's like, super, in, like, influenced by, like, Billy Idol and, like, um, like, a lot of shit like that. Like, the punk side of Billy Idol or the more dense pop? No, nah, like, Rebel Yell. I guess, okay. And, you know, yeah. It's just that he ultimately became... I am obsessed with Billy Idol. I was a big fan. We had the same color hair. I had a spiked haircut. I had the 
Roy. I had the fucking um, awesome. the spike bracelets because like back in the 80s when you were like a wee bebe, you know, like you go to the shore and you play those dumb games, you know, for a quarter and the wheel spins. Like in, in those days, like every one of them had fucking spike bracelets. It was like a fucking thing. Like it was almost like they were shoveling them out of a truck. It's, you guys all walked around looking like the warriors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, they were, yes. but they were like the authentic ones that, you know, you see in the old like CBGB's photo. They were like fucking um, pink likes. and pyramid and kind of user friendly but we thought we were so badass when we were wearing pyramid spikes or what's I was up? like 10 you know but they say when, when a trend dies what year were you 10 probably. years old um 84 yeah I think I got I wasn't years. even in existence oh I got like 12 years old yeah. you missed the 80s they were all right. I was born in 85 11 okay. years difference alright so our 11 years difference is similar to my 9 years difference with my older sister but I always had kind of a, you know, she was kind of like the second mom, like. Yeah, you uh, learned stuff, like a lot of the stuff that she would know too, probably from her. Like, oh yeah, she helped me buy my first car. She helped yeah. me get my first apartment. That's nice. My sister has always had my fucking back, and she's great. She goes a little too far, and before she had a kid, I was, she kind of like, used her maternal on me, and it, and it drove me crazy. She literally criticized the way I was shaving once. I got pissed off and walked out of the house. And, uh, you know, she wasn't dating a 16-year-old or doing anything fucked up or sketchy. She just criticized my shaving and I ran out of the house. But, um, I have an older stepsister, but we have always had a really close and good rapport. Just, like, an unnatural understanding of each other. Like, yo, what's up? And that's just, like, it. Like, you know what I'm saying? But See, I, I have a younger sister. But we have that, but we also fight and disagree about certain things. See, and... Because you saw her brought into this younger, world. Yeah, and I used to look out for her, and, but also, I don't know, she's always been a little bit of a pain. <laughs> but she would probably say the same thing about me, and um, she used to say that, um, you know, I, I got some favoritism, and that people were tougher on her, or something like that. I don't know if that's true or not. I just do tend to be charismatic, so... No, it was like the opposite. And the other thing is, she still talks to my father, and I don't. Yeah. So, so the, I think that's a little awkward because she's kind of close with her, with my half sisters, and I don't talk to them at all. It's not that I block them out. I'm actually Facebook friends with them, but um, I just don't really want to see my dad or my stepmom at all. I don't think they've brought anything positive into my family's life. Um, I think they've done quite the opposite. So. That's um, tough to make so that decision me, to completely shun somebody. For me, it's uh, like we're two for three in here with that. I don't talk to my dad's stepmom. I feel like if somebody's going to bring you down, like my dad is also charismatic, but I say I use my powers for good and he uses them for evil. I mean, he's like con people out of money and stuff like that. He lives in my grandmother's house rent free. She's got Alzheimer's and he doesn't help take care of her. I mean, it's terrible. So I don't yeah. need someone like that in my life. Like, I just surround myself with really close people that I know I can trust and that have a positive influence on me, and I feel like that really helps me develop as a person. <laughs> you think I have a positive influence on you? <laughs> I do in certain aspects. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that, um, yeah, you can have like a, like, a, like a dark streak, like I have a dark streak and you can still have no. positive influence on people. <laughs> you have a dark streak? <laughs> no. So the breakup I went through last week was quite traumatic because basically... Did your like, band break up? No, no. Uh, uh, so, um, let's see. I started texting with this girl in November. I'm at OkCupid. Okay she actually contacted me and she was in Colorado and she had a drug habit and she went through some sort of spiritual Buddhist experience and left drugs, left her abusive boyfriend and transformed her life but she was living on people's couches and I fell for this whole thing. And I told her to move in with me, and we had sex all the time. Like, so much that we had to, like, cut back because we were starting to injure ourselves. Did your penis hurt, Phil? Yeah, it did. Isn't that the For, worst? like, days. Yeah. It was, like, five times a day on a Saturday, and every day, like, twice a day. This girl was rubbing up against me. She, we had, like, a daddy, baby girl thing going on. She would just be like, <laughs> she would text me, you have the sexiest cock. That was her on the fucking thing. I love your cock, this, that, and the other. Well, Els and I, well, my ex-wife and I were trying to become friends again. I introduced them. They became friends. 
And apparently they had a kiss one night and they had some energy work happen and they became attuned to each other and they became kindred spirit sisters or some bullshit. Alright, alright, roll back the videotape. They they had a energized moment. A kiss, yeah. And so I don't know, you're talking a lot of new age stuff. Did you pick up on that? Well, did you ever hear the joke? They what is say, a lesbian? I don't say that I believe it. Did you ever hear the joke, though? What is Because the magic mean? trick now, I'm, I'm banging your fucking girlfriend. You, fuck you. So wait a minute, wait a minute. No, did you ever hear the joke? What does a lesbian bring to a second date? What? A U Haul. A U Haul with all her uh-huh. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So. So then she tells me that, um, you know, she's attuned now, so she doesn't see why they should be physical anymore, and they're just really close friends and they're kindred spirits. And then, like, as things evolve, they start hanging out, and then she says, well, you know, how would you feel if I dated you both? And I'm like, I'm not into that at all. You can go live with her, or please just be with me until you move out. And she was like, that's fine. And apparently they were together one Saturday night, and then she didn't tell me, and she broke her promise to me. Then I see on Elsa's Facebook, she's going to get an apartment with a roommate, two bedroom, which is interesting. And uh, then I called her up and I said, who's your roommate? Oh, it's Nella. That's what I thought. And then I said, have you guys been together? And she said, yeah. So at least she was honest with me, but she didn't come clean to me until I asked her. I wouldn't get upset about the two bedroom thing because I, I I'm think not people, upset, but I'm just but saying. people from Belgium get two bedrooms so they can have a cow in the second uh, bedroom. I think right? they're not going to be like together <laughs> together, but they're going to be seeing oh, each I other. I think one room is going to be full of sexual accoutrements. Yeah. Ah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. I have to. <laughs> the dungeon. <laughs> but I this just, is my um, positive impact on you. I came home and I... <laughs> I would call that. I love it. I, found, I, I caught her in, I know, in basically two lies. <laughs> she didn't tell me she was moving in with my ex-wife, and she didn't tell me they uh, were together. And she promised me they wouldn't be while we were together. And then she... I, I, she wanted to date both of us, basically. And I said no, because there's a lot of emotional residue there. And... Elsa doesn't want to be with me. She wants to figure out who she is and stuff like that. So, so I said, we're not together. We're not nothing. And this girl freaked out, played her music in her ears, was crying so much she was hyperventilating in the room. Oh, my God. Then, um, basically, I called Elsa up. It was like the next day or the day after. I threw her out. I made her sleep on the couch. And I said, you got to pick this girl up. And then I told her that morning. And she told me that it was a legal eviction and that I should think of a better timeline. And, you know, of course that's just like me to run when things get rough. This is what this girl said to me. I was like, are you kidding me? I dropped her off, I called my ex-wife, and I told her, I said, you better pick this girl up tonight because if she refuses to leave, I'm gonna have to call the cops. And uh, and then when she got all her stuff together that night, she apologized. She wrote me an apology letter. She's not on your she's lease, so right? She's so sorry. No, she's not on my That's what I'm lease. saying. It's not an illegal eviction. Hell no, it's not an illegal eviction. She never paid for him. And you didn't. It's not like you threw her shit out on the she street. She paid for you, her half a month once. You told her to leave. Too. She still has shit in my house. I'm sure she does. But that. But what I'm saying is, you told her to leave. That's not an illegal eviction. That's illegal eviction is you is you throwing her shit out on the street. But I knew she was full of shit. Yeah. And yeah, I think she manipulated Els. I think she manipulated me. Um, yeah. And then when she had all her stuff together, she's like, you know how many times this has <laughs> happened to me this year? And I said, oh my god, my ex-wife is doing me a favor right now. Phil, look, I love you. I'm getting rid of this girl. Yes. Yeah. I was way too impulsive. I love you. I have some sort of hero thing. But I. I'm insane. I felt. I, have problems. I felt like, in a way, I'm like, you seem happy. I'm not going to say anything to you. But, but you I feel was... like this is a bad decision, or maybe a decision that needs more thought. Wait, what's the bad decision? No, the the whole the whole situation. Oh, having her move in with me was a bad decision. From an- yeah, yeah, that was a bad decision. Like. I did have great sex with you. I don't. I know. I get that. <laughs> Believe me. I dated a half black, half Irish girl. Crazy girl sex. sex is the best. It is. But it comes with a price. But it comes with the price of your fucking sanity. I was like fucking insane with like fucking anxiety for like days. No, what we, is going on here? What should I do? It was. It was bad. It was a bad scene, man. And then I felt relieved when she left, and I was like, thank God. Um, so now everybody is telling me that sooner or later, and I told my ex-wife, you better be careful with this one, because she's got a dark side. She says, well, I do too, and I'm like, not like her. 
So now everybody's telling me that sooner or later, those two are gonna drive each other crazy and they're gonna explode. And then Els is gonna come knocking on your door and what are you gonna do then? And Slam. that's the fucking question that I've been Dude, asking myself for days. Don't think about it. Oh, Listen, just lock focus. the door. I no, just, they don't have just focus on you, man. Like That's what I'm trying to do. You, but it's so weird, man. I mean, I've been living with a girl for... Well, Els was like 10 years and my ex was like 6. For like 16 years, I've been living with a woman. Now all of a sudden, I'm living by myself. And it's weird, man. It's just weird. I gotta get used to it. And I'm used to having somebody to worry about, I guess. So... Hey, I'm fucking crazy. You can worry yeah, about me. Worry about you. Worry about you, worry about you about Jim. Oh my you god. You have nice tits and you smell good. Thanks, man. I smell like a truck driver that's been in the No, 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 no. no that's a nice that's white shirt. A nice really white shirt. It up. Because it was too hot in here because I had my Sean Connery shirt on. Anyway, that's the <laughs> that's the week that I had. So this week I've been just trying to focus on me. And, yes, Sue. So and fuck you, Paul Anka. Jim, why do you fucking. Why are you fucking Paul Anka? Because Paul Anka's saying. Uh, breaking up is hard to do. Yeah, but he also sang Stupid Cupid. He, he wrote so many good songs. I mean, it was just, <laughs> it was just a knock on Breaking Up is Hard to Do. Like, oh, I thought you hated Paul Anka. I was like mad when I saw him. Like, you don't fucking talk shit about Paul Anka and come in my God, house. He's he has the same first name no, no, no. as me. <laughs> I understand your anger. But that's fine. Maybe I don't talk me. shit about fucking, uh, well, <laughs> Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> oh, hey, oh, I, I saw a call. <laughs> But no, make sure you keep filling Pete Dick out of this. No, no, all right. Maybe it was unclear, but... <laughs> dick. I don't know. Phil uh, okay, K sucks a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Who sucks a dick? Phil K, dick. <clears throat> they made a lot of great movies. He's a sci-fi author. Oh, uh, Not very well known. You might not have heard of him. Yeah, um, I, I know a few, um, but... What do you call it? Uh, Blade do, Runner? Do you know Android's Dream of Electric Sheep? That's Blade Runner, yeah. basically. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I'm, that, I'm speaking literary terms. <laughs> Excellent, <laughs> literary. <laughs> Total Recall. That was one of his stories. I, I, I love movies. Briefly, let me go back to Paul Anka. I love Paul Anka. He's one of the greatest <laughs> jingle writers of all time. <laughs> he did a Simpsons. <laughs> I just, I thought it was clear that everybody knew he's saying breaking up is hard to do. And I got a couple. I would of like laughs. you to get down on your knees and <laughs> say sorry to Paul. And honestly, good night, everybody. <laughs> Kiss the carpet. Um, you must kiss a Paul Anka record. Because <laughs> Paul Anka just shows up and has rings for some Oh, people. yeah, Paul Anka lives in this building. Does he? No. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Um, I remember, like, I first became aware of the Paul Anka song Breaking Up is Hard to Do in the movie Better Off Dead. Cusack mm -hmm. is like flipping the radio channels and every song's a fucking love song when he went through a breakup. Yeah. This is actually a good... This is an apt topic. <laughs> so then, the last one is Kama, Kama, Dal, dude. And it was, you know, it's that old school recording. Everything sounds cutesy and he just like rips the freaking radio out and chucks it out the fucking window. And, and, uh, and then a hamburger dances to Van Halen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the best thing ever. I love right. that movie. That's right, yeah. I love that. And then Pee Wee Herman's girlfriend has like a musical performance at the dance. Oh, yeah. Does she? Yeah, she's the one that sings that song. I'll be better off, Dan. Oh, that's uh, I am without you. Yeah, look closely. It's Dottie. It's fucking Dottie. I'm mm -hmm. Rebel Dottie. <laughs> <laughs> I always, I had I I, oh, I never knew that was her. Yeah. You know, I always was like uh when I was a kid I always thought the French girl in that was actually like a French girl. You know? But she's not. Yeah. She's not, no, but she's like a great actress. Like she's terrific. Totally, really. I thought she played that so well in that movie. That's one of my favorite movies ever. Like I watched that as a kid and was like uh like I'll always say it's reasons. <laughs> you know, I like reasons. Like, just to my, you know. My, so. Every time I pass, when, when I'm doing demos at Costco, every time I pass the giant fucking box of raisin aisle, they have giant boxes of raisins. And I'm like, oh, it's raisins. But if I was in your shoes and that was my job, I'd be like, it's soup. You like soup. And whenever you're demoing, like, I, it's it's a Milano cookies. You like Milano cookies. How do I know what they like? I don't know that you hold it out. Dude, if I said that, then these, these people, people, people are sad. Some of these people are fucking dicks. And they're like, if and I said really something, can't fuck with them, like, oh, I do. I do. Um, okay. So, I was doing fucking apples, and I cut my fucking self on a oh, thing. Oh, did that at work? Uh, <laughs> yeah, did that at work. So, they have this thing called an apple core. It looks like a Trivial Pursuit piece with sharp blades, Real and it has handles. 
put it over the apple, it takes the corn up, but it kept getting stuck because they gave me a fucking cheap one. How do you think that happens? What's in there that makes it cut the apple, Jim? <laughs> Something sharp, apparently. <laughs> so here's where it gets really stupid. So there's a first cut right here. So it happened once. Not not a big deal. Caught it before. Because I have a sense for when I'm about to be cut because I'm using knives all the time. And I'm always cooking. So I know when I'm going to cut myself. And um, So I kind of pull back. But So I had the little cut. Closed my cart. Fixed it up. Blah, blah, blah. And then I fucking did it again. And I really freaking sliced it. I mean, do you want to get in on it? Like, do you want to show You could show, show this? You could show that. I can't yeah, that right. too. 1080p. So it's, it's healing and it's not gangrenous. No, down more. Oh. <laughs> They can't even see that, whatever it is. It's, it's not gory enough. Oh, oh no, because it's healed. Oh, my God, you should have seen it today. It was bleeding. Well, I saw oh. that picture. It was nasty. Yeah, it was... Um, the, it's because like, you gave them a thumbs up. They like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Um, so I was doing the apples, and then there's like this, there's this soluble fiber called pectin, oh, pectin. which can reduce your cholesterol. So, because sometimes they don't give me anything to work with on the sheet, so I have to look so up wait, shit they on my gave phones. you pectin and apples in an apple cutter? How the fuck do you have pectin? No, 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 pectin's already in the apples. Oh, okay. So, but that's the selling point. I should have made that clear. So anyway, so I kept saying, and it has pectin. Which is a, a soluble fiber good for the cholesterol, so truly an apple a day will keep the doctor away. Ooh. And there's always at least two old, there's three people that look at me like, what a fucking asshole, but there's always two old <laughs> ladies that go, oh, that's so charming, can I try them? <laughs> it fucking Then you works. slap their head, no, <laughs> look at them, cut. In my brain, yes. <laughs> But these are the thing. That's the truckload of stuff I'm trying to get rid of. You look at my apples. You what? <laughs> when I was a kid, my favorite thing at lunch was we would just like somebody would just take an apple. Like who's gonna do it? Like I don't want my apple, so just take it and roll it along the floor. Mm -hmm. And it was like in the gym that they would convert into the lunchroom with like a big fucking wall that uh, no one yeah. was allowed to go near. Like, the kid got crushed once. Don't go near it. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> They would close the big wall and we would, they would pull the fucking lunch tables out of the wall. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bed in like an old New York apartment. What? Yeah. yeah, and then we would sit there and we would take an apple and we would just roll it out in the middle of the floor and then like the miserable lunch ladies. <laughs> One of them had like a like a haircut that just looked like the head of a penis. <laughs> And the other one, uh, <laughs> these are human beings. The Paul. other one just had like short hair. She looked kind of like Napoleon Dynamite's mom. Oh yeah. Uh, and one of them would always yell, "Pick up your apples!" <laughs> and we just thought it was the funniest thing because, like, you know, testicles, basically. I don't know. That was our. That was our. And we would also fucking sometimes just take a, a pack of ketchup and just smash it. Oh yeah. And uh, I saw many fights fight. go down. Yeah, just like what the fuck? Like the kid that doesn't expect it. He's not. He's eating his lunch. <laughs> Happens to be the kid that can kick everyone's ass. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it spills on him. So their ass beat it was great. I, I miss the grammar school fucking. Uh, the hierarchy <laughs> of like just it's like uh, yeah, social just, Darwinism well you could do anything in fourth grade like, right. you could fucking punch a kid in the face as hard as you want <laughs> and it's like that kid learns a lesson and you kind of learn a lesson like okay there's consequences for punching a kid but like right. that kid learns like oh man maybe I shouldn't fuck with kids it's like a right. balance it can be but it could also be unfair if somebody's uh, getting picked on or something. Well, yeah, but it was funny. The kid that always did the picking on was like a, this little fucking squirt, right? Napoleon complex. Yeah, and he would like pick on everybody, and everybody was like all nervous about it. And then I'll never forget this kid. He was like probably six feet tall by like sixth grade, mm -hmm. and gay as fuck. Wow. Um, fucking this kid said something to him, and it was like a thing. Like, they went to, like, the principal and tried, like, mm -hmm. for years, you know, like, mm -hmm. for a year, you know, could something be done about this? Like, this kid's being an asshole. Nothing got done. Right. So the kid's mom told him, like, you're way bigger than him. Just fucking, if he, if he throws a punch at you, fucking throw one right back at him. Right. Don't fucking hesitate. Also, this kid, he was like Big Bird, you know? Like, he's a big, <laughs> awkward kid. And... This kid said something to him and fucking pushed him, and bam, like, 
I don't even, I don't know if he punched him, I don't know if he slapped him, but the kid went down like a sack of shit, you know, like, <laughs> and never fucked with him again. Good. Uh, and I probably didn't fuck with a lot of people again. Like, mm -hmm. he was like the kid that, like, if you beat the shit out of him, mm -hmm. like, I dropped him on a glass bottle. Nice. And it broke, and he had blood on him, I had his blood on me, like, it was fucking pretty gruesome. But once that was done, it's like, okay, you know. Yeah. This kid could fucking do some shit, so I'm yeah. not gonna fuck with him. Like, I don't know. You shouldn't have to approach every relationship in your life like that. Like, right. To be humbled by a, another warrior. Right, right. But, uh, I don't know. It's like a weird. Uh, like, I wonder how people like that exist now. Like, I wonder if that gets medicated mm. or, like, whatever, you know. Like, I think grammar school is always grammar school and kids gonna be kids, but, uh,. You know, when you become an adult, you obviously can't settle it that way. Unless it's in the ring. Yeah, no, you can settle it in the ring. I'm all about that. You can settle it with pistols if you want, but... No, we, we go get mattresses. We just <laughs> carry them on top of our car. <laughs> nice. Combat league. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we gotta get that kid back in here from last week. Oh, uh, yeah. The 90s guys, go check them out. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're probably good playing time. video games tonight. So wait, you, so you heard a conspiracy theory? I yeah, you you it. came in tonight like we gotta change the whole show. I'm like the whole show. I see the body. There's a conspiracy. I was like, wait a minute, you just wrote a whole post about what we're talking about, and now we're changing the whole show. Um, look, as far as the post, if we don't talk about it, I gotta make an executive decision. And if we don't talk about it, it doesn't matter. So, okay. all right, so I'm sitting at work, and there's this woman. I'm not going to say any names. I'm not even going to say where I work, because I technically don't work where I said the location is. So anyway. It's in space. It's in space. On Jupiter. On oh, Jupiter's Mars. moon. Ooh. Ooh. We got done early, and a conversation evolved into how much uh, Governor Murphy's an asshole texting the rain, and then... I was like, oh, I didn't hear about that. I gotta look that up. And she's like, oh, also look up the uh, the coup. Did you hear about the coup in Obama? <laughs> and I try not to talk politics anymore these days because it's just too polarizing and nobody wants to hear anything. Doesn't Obama retire? And that's that's why I was like, please tell me about <laughs> Obama and the coup. The scary black and man. I got Obama Obama and the coup. Obama <laughs> and the coup. Hi, proletario. Obama <laughs> and the coup. Nice. <laughs> Go on. So please continue okay, so, your riveting story. So apparently, um, James Comey's involved. Of course. Um, and like most conservatives, uh, there's no nuts and bolts to this. James Comey's involved, and it's related to the Steele dossier, which Obama and the Clintons and some corporations. Right. Um, made false to um, unseat the president. So all of it sounds a lot like the same shit that Hannity's been saying and Mark Mark Simone has been saying and fucking Rush Limbaugh has been saying and well, yeah, all those over other and over and over. What does Alex Jones say? <laughs> probably oh, his probably even goes even further. But you know, Gerbils. Um, yeah, like no, but no. To call Sean Hannity no. Goebbels is 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 fucked up because Goebbels was like a professor. He was like a highly educated man. Goebbels said he actually borrowed this from American advertising. But when they made the Nazi propaganda, he said say the same thing, say it simply, and say it over and over and over again until people believe it. So if you listen to any two or three of those talking heads, you got the same message three times already, and it's starting to penetrate your gray matter. I it's, agree with you. And, the, fucking, and uh, think about it, it's deeper than that. That repetitive stuff that goes up, washes over that particular sect of audience has already been conditioned by religion for the same kind of thing. For sure. So, you know, if you say the same thing over and over again, that's how that guy freaking... Like, 20 years ago, you know, that... that you know, access, change? We don't know. I'm just saying, like, no, no, no. The like, Democrats do it, too. I know, everybody does it. That's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is the fucking tie Trump should not have been elected based on the Access Hollywood thing alone. And somehow that guy fucking got elected. Why? Like, because that is some you know straight much, up fucking, like, that showed his I, I, true I, fucking no, color. I don't think it did at all. Honestly, 
I don't think Trump is that much different than me, where he just says Oh my god, fucked I'm fucking shit getting out of your apartment. No, he says fucked up shit because he thinks it's going to make the other person laugh. Like, I, yeah, would I ever say, oh, I just grabbed him by the pussy? Maybe if I had a million dollars and fucking, I thought, I, you know, that would be a funny joke to tell. I right. don't know what that perspective but he was, is. But he was talking about sexually assaulting women, kissing them un, without any permission, and then he's, him and, and fucking Billy Bush Do you really think weird? anybody kisses him? Come on, look at him. My thing is this, okay? That's well, well and good, but if you look at the policies, they're not too great. He just signed something that, you know, they can just throw chemicals into the fucking water supply. You know, just all this... Oh, they're opening really, up, really? Yeah. They're opening up all kinds of shit, and they're just rolling back all the regulations. I don't know, listen. Who gives a fuck about anybody but the rich anymore? And I'm going to say one thing. There's something about, like, you found out all this shit about Bill Clinton, like, after the fact, right? There's something about you got the a good job, woohoo. Well, you know. yeah. Well, it's no, that's like when he got caught. Corruption corruption you think that was the first fucking blowjob Bill Clinton ever got yeah. from an intern? That's well, not corruption. Well, you're doing, what you're power. doing is that what about no, is no, no, not every time you bring up Trump being a fucking creep, the first words out of a, a Republican no, or he's, conservative's mouth is Bill fucking Clinton. No, but Clinton's he's irrelevant. But he's honest. He's he's pretty much in the yeah, forefront. He's not honest. honest. He tells people he's gonna lie. He's not honest. He's and he lies. And he lies. I think that he's... No. I think that he's fucking... People voted for him because they felt like he just put it out there and didn't give a fuck. Right. That's what made him different from other politicians. I'm not defending him. What I'm saying is his game plan... Dude, he did a fucking roast where every great fucking comedian that was alive at the time came and said the worst shit about him. And at the end of it, he said... And now I'm going to run for president of the United States of America. And everybody thought that was the biggest joke. Right. He was in pro wrestling, right? He telegraphed this for fucking 14 years. He was in pro wrestling. He was on TV on The Apprentice every fucking week. He was in tabloids. He was was fucking... He was always in tabloids for one thing or another. It's not like he was ever... He did the whole birther thing. You know what I'm saying? He cultivated a fucking very insane kind of crazy fan base, but also got a lot of sane thinking people along the way that A, they're not going to vote for Hillary Clinton. They might, they would have voted for Bernie Sanders, but she fucked him. Basically, yeah. So it ended up being... I think the Democratic National Party fucked him. I yeah, know, it was that's her. No, but there was the entire do you think party. it was? Do you think it? She didn't know it was going to happen to him. Right. Uh, There's a lot of moving parts, but what you're saying is consistent with Michael Cohen's testimony about it was the greatest publicity stunt ever, like the greatest like branding, yeah, marketing scheme ever. Yes. And uh, dude, and he, he took almost, a Stone Cold Stunner. He he took a Stone Cold Stunner from Stone Cold Steve Austin. He got fucking lambasted by every great comic that's alive right now. Like, every any shitty thing that could have happened to him or that he would have done, I feel like it already would have... It would have already toppled them, and it didn't. It just fucking snowballed into this, like, thing that we have now as president. He's in bed with All questions, right. man. I always heard... See, it's funny. They've already said that they take money from the Russians, so I don't know what the fuck. But doesn't uh, why, it, why on the campaign trail the first like six months? Would it be great if we got along with Russia? Would it be great? He was like greasing the wheels because he was fucking nervous. If you look at every foreign affairs move he's made, they all benefit Russia. Pulling out of Syria benefits Russia. Pulling out of Afghanistan benefits Russia. Getting less in touch with NATO benefits Russia. Uh, threatening our uh, 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 you know European allies benefits Russia. Every move benefits Russia. Look, I get. It. He's a cult of personality. I'm just saying, I, I, it's I, it's what I, yeah, it's a I, I get what you're saying, but like the thing is, not his supporters, just Trump himself represents everything I hate about America yeah. and the greed and the, the pompousness and the fucking hypocrisy Trump. and the and the fucking xenophobe and, and, but, and, and but just, he just but, represents everything I fucking hate. But what about I mean what has Obama done since he left office? Like, let's do one of s- Like, it, the guy gets a shitload of money for speeches. Do you think he's not motivated by some kind of greed? He did a lot of this, like, 
drone kills. That was a big thing True. for me. There's, there's blood, there's blood, there's blood on the blood hands of the million. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I, I got policy, into a play on Facebook listen, with your ex wife. The, the policy is not you. that much. Interesting. Like, I would say there's about 50% of shit that Trump's done that was already happening for years before, you know, probably during Bush. I mean, you could say Bush started it because they didn't have the technology, you know, whatever, but it's. It's, well, that, just, it's meet the new boss, same as the old boss, with a different group of people that's mad. That's all it is. But it's the same core shit that's going to happen regardless. I don't think there's... Look, I'm just... I think maybe maybe I'm an old lefty, but destiny. like, I just think government should do for the people what it can't do for himself. And there is... Well, we I don't know, the way capitalism is working and the way things are going, I mean... Come on, life is not about, you know, you work hard, you do your thing, you're supposed to ha have everything. It's dead. It's all... Yeah. I mean, some people... There's a there's a degree of luck. For and sure. and I don't know. I just... I don't think that... I mean, bottom line, I don't think somebody should be, you know, a fucking heart attack away from bankruptcy or a cancer diagnosis away from bankruptcy. I agree with you. There are some, some basic things that need to be done, and there was a lot of saber rattling about fucking... You know, rebuilding the infrastructure, and Trump's gonna rebuild the infrastructure. What has he fucking done? Nothing. But like saber rattling about like violating the first the first amendment by trying to get SNL, uh, you know, because his fucking say, poor bruised ego. That guy is a piece of shit. Well, yeah, the whole SNL thing is ridiculous. But I will say this: like, I've had more luck getting work in the last. Uh, I would say since like 2016 than ever before. I was unemployed. I was, well, I was self employed for like a long time. Who was that, man? And, and like, if I went out for job interviews, like, I wouldn't, I would get either offered like shit money that's not, you know, like, I'm not going to work for $10 but, an hour. But that's because of the Great Recession. That has nothing to do with and that, either and that president. Has, yeah. And that's like back in the Bush era and actually it's been for the last 30 years. I don't know. I I got to say, I never When the government ever. wrote a check to save the banks, that's what... No, I mean, it started from rolling back regulations from the 1970s and opening up China for factories and sending all the jobs overseas and shit like that. That's what gets my goat about the whole green thing. And I think we should do our part to be green. But it's like, we need to try to hold other countries accountable. We're not. But then you think about that, it's like, okay. Well, we well, pulled out of the Paris we, Accords. Well, no, we... Yeah, but we also send all our manufacturing overseas, so all the True. pollution that manufacturing shit makes now comes out of China. So it's like, can we really blame them for fucking polluting? Yeah, right. Too? Yeah, like, somebody's got to fucking do it. Yeah. Uh, but I, I feel like it's, the onus is almost like, we don't make that much pollution. Like, we, as a country, generally consider trying to cut down on, you know, all that shit. Like cars get more efficient. I think as, a, as an entire world, like cars yeah. get more efficient. You know, they, they release less carbon dioxide, shit like that. Yeah. Like, but in the big picture, we could, we could be green, completely carbon neutral, no, we're not harming the ozone layer at all. The rest of the world is just going to be fucking burning through it. Like they, you know, like a fucking stoner with an ounce of weed. Like I don't think it has to go that way. I think that if um, we find a viable way to make green energy work, then other countries are just going to adopt it. And I think that we're on the path for that. I think that um, renewables go up every year. I think that there's been a lot of oil reserves in the U.S. that they've been holding back for a long time. And now it's politically and economically feasible to release all that oil. And we're going to get down to it, and then we're going to turn into green energy. And I think that all the fossil fuel companies are just going to turn around and take all their money and buy whatever big green companies come along, and they're just going to take that over, too. All right. I agree with that, and I don't know, there's a there's an aspect to our our society and capitalism that is really fucking with the environment, and that is the wasting of food. We waste yeah. so much fucking food. You have any idea how much? I threw away three garbage bags full of perfectly good tortellini. and for a fat guy, that's really upsetting. <laughs> I mean, it's really fucking upsetting. <laughs> 
theft uh, somewhere? Technically, that's theft, and I, and I could be prosecuted for shoplifting. Yeah, that is like that, one of those things. Right? It's it's technical, even though it was already paid for. But I have no ownership of it. Yeah, you're. Just I'm like the, the handler. Um, you're the transport. You know, so but no, no, no. But like, I'm kind of like. Um, all right, remember GI Joe? There was like Hawk, Duke, Flint, and then. Then the, the lily asshole Beachhead, who was so ashamed that he was fourth in line that he wore a green mask. I'm Beachhead in this job. I'm fourth in line, so I basically clean up after the dumb old ladies that were at the first shift. <laughs> so, but I don't know. I my show a couple weeks ago with the with the with the um, with the strip down aces, like about nine pe- nine ten people, past and present employees. Came to see me. That's cool. Even even my supervisor, who who I had butt head, butted heads with. Yeah. Now we're cool. Nice. And she showed up. She did not have to do that. And that was that was the coolest thing. And um, but like, all right. So the thing is, you waste the food. There are people that are starving that could shit have the food. And the thing is, is my boss tried to donate the food, but it became such a hassle to gather the food and wait for the people to show up to pick it up that he said it was wasting too much of his day and he couldn't do it anymore. Uh, so it, 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 ah, it's just, but the thing is, is all that tortellini I threw out, somebody had to manufacture it, you know, yep. the, the, the electricity to process it, the, yeah. the, the gas to, for, you know, like wasting can't, food is, but can't is you a yourself huge as, as the passionate person just take that tortellini yourself and bring it to like a food bank or something like that? Can't get out the door with it, dude. I'm not going to lose my job. If I try to get out no, the I mean, door with it, when, when it's time for you to leave, can you do that yourself? I could talk to my boss, but... Because, look, I got an extra turkey at work around Christmas time, and I actually brought it to a food bank. Did you put your genitals in the turkey? Well, yes. The thing is, the best thing you can do for a food bank is write them a check so they can get fresh food for people. Well, they said they were Can't. serving turkey anyway, and it was... Oh, uh, no, that, that, what you did was great. Yeah. What you did is great. But I'm to saying, if you can set something up with, like, a food pantry and a church or something like that... You can probably just do that yourself, and then you can save that waste. I feel like it's better when individuals who are passionate take control and do something. You're actually exporting your power to your boss who was trying to do it. So I would say just do it yourself, but that's just me. DIY. <clears throat> Word up. And yeah, we're going to talk a big game. The other that. problem in this country is is that, you know, we don't... We don't you know, as, as I guess the lower classes, we don't think about class in this country. I heard that Americans are basically all just embarrassed millionaires. Like, uh, they're just waiting for that fortune to come that never comes or something like that. You know, we don't want to put laws on rich people because we think that someday we might become rich, although percentage-wise... Uh, I don't want to be favorite, rich. I just want to be comfortable. My favorite thing is that uh, Aunt Becky from... Mm-hmm. Uh, Full House got arrested for uh, bribing <laughs> colleges for <laughs> dumb kids. <laughs> and our fucking and and you know what's great about that too is the litigation that it opens up for all the colleges that have now accepted these people. Like people are filing lawsuits against college. Like, well, I had a four point six GPA and I scored perfect on my SATs. I didn't get the fuck you know oh. get in like. So it, that it really, poor asshole. Can you imagine that? Yeah, like the guy that's like fucking top of his class really He's wants to go to the school. He's fucking working his ass off, and some lazy and schmuck Jesse has got the money. Wife. <laughs> just spending all the royalty money. Uh, no, and I was thinking about that too. I'm like, that bitch is a TV <laughs> actress. Like, she's in like small movies. Right. Like, who is she fucking to have? <laughs> You know, a half a million dollars to piss away to get her dumb kid into college. Oh, so I was like, I'm like, oh, Massimo, who makes all the clothes at Target. Yeah. Massimo is her husband. Really? Yeah. I actually like his clothes. Yeah, they're for Massimo. Massimo, yeah, they're fine. Yeah, I've Massimo was like the Target show clothes back in the day. Yeah, it's like a cool Target clothes. Yeah. Massimo. Ooh. Massimo. Massimo. Massimo forever. Wow. Like, do you remember that dumb volleyball movie with the guy with the long blonde hair and a guy who was in a dumb movie? Um, no, no, the guy from Taps. I don't know. It was a beach volleyball movie. Anyway, Massimo was one of the sponsors oh, uh, yeah. of the big volleyball tournament. And that was huh. like, that movie was like 83 or 80, 84. Yeah. So they've been around for So he's an old guy that probably fucked like a younger actress, put two kids into her, and then she, you know, her kids are too dumb to go to fucking Some college, people so. go into acting as a giant audition to bag a rich guy. Like, huh, you know. 
Yeah, when I look at her, really? she's oh, yeah. That happens all the time. There are all kinds of stories about. When that. I look at Aunt Becky, and, and I think that she's uh, more fuckable wise. now oh, than she was uh, in Full House when she was like my age. Yeah, it's like ah, uh, that's that's great plastic surgery, but <laughs> like just probably a miserable person. Yeah, inside. Yeah, I'm just dead inside. Just not right. Just like, I, I, I have to spend, it, have to spend millions of dollars to get my kids into college because they're so dumb, you know? Yeah. But that kid wasn't really all that dumb. She was kind of like a mini entrepreneur. No. She was a kid with a famous parent that was on YouTube. She's not an entrepreneur. Come on. So you think if her 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 mother, if her circumstances were different, she wouldn't get all the... She would be some kid, and her mom would be like, go to fucking bed. You have to go to school tomorrow. Like... You know, but how? I mean, so, so the mom set up all those corporations. They go to state money. college. Her mom us. was a fucking spokesperson for L'Oreal or whatever. You think uh, that she doesn't bring her kid? Like, hey, you think she could be in a commercial? Like, she could sell to younger people. Come on, it's it's a fucking it's all like uh, it's what's all nepotism. Nepotism, yeah. I was gonna say priapism, but I know that's an erection. <laughs> I think nepotism is technically you have to be. Related. What is That's the a serious problem? If you get privatism, you should go to the privatism erection room. lasting more than four hours. Oh, oh, oh. It'll be painful. You may be experiencing <laughs> priapism, an, ele- an erection lasting more than four hours. You have to go to the emergency room. That's a serious problem. What do they do? Do they suck they, the they, blood out of the penis? No, I, I think they <laughs> they uh, they lance it. They give you a shot. They drain it. They relax your muscles. Dream. Do they just call a vampire and he bites it like a hot dog? <laughs> <laughs> I want to bite you I want to fix you. Ah. <laughs> we always immediately go to the Bela Lugosi vampire. I like it though. <laughs> yeah, well, Nosferatu was a silent film, so Fair it's enough. hard to... Well, except for that remake they did. Uh, nah, that doesn't count. Okay. Max well, Kinski. Uh, but wasn't the of the no, was it, what's his name? Wasn't Green Goblin? Klaus Kinski? I mean? no, oh, Willem Dafoe. Yeah, they did that movie Shadow of the Vampire that was like uh, about making Nosferatu. And it turns oh, out he was a real vampire. Yeah, he was a real vampire. Yeah. It's a it's a goofy movie. I was I don't know. I had higher expectations. No, they remade Nosferatu with Klaus Kinski in like the seventies. Oh, I didn't but, know that. Uh, but it's, I didn't either. Yeah, it's not good. But I liked Shadow of the Vampire because they. It shows them remaking all the the like iconic Nosferatu scenes, and it looked cool yeah. to see them like now, you know, not all grainy and fucking shit it up, but like, yeah. I, that was like a weird movie. Like, I don't like when they try to make a movie that's about a movie, but they try to do some weird shit like that. Like, oh yeah, he was really a vampire, and then people see it and like, oh that guy, yeah, I heard he was really a vampire. Like. No, he's just an actor. Fucking weird German guy. <laughs> just happened to look like a freak. Yeah, and like, every time I listen to a Stern interview, he always brings up um, the guy who played Abe Lincoln. Um, Daniel Day-Lewis. Daniel Day-Lewis apparently is a method actor and requires the set to call him what his character Call is. me Abe! <laughs> and then, like, so Stern always brings up, like, what? Like, I, 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 how did you feel? He, he was it was particularly a Robert Downey Jr. interview, which is great. he always interviews Robert Downey Jr. Like every every time a Marvel movie comes out, he you know yeah. he goes on and stir. But but he's like, what do you do when you got this guy with the Abe Lincoln hat? And the actors always dodge it and they go, hey, whatever you need to do to get to that place, yeah. I'm all for it because they don't want to shit on Daniel Day Lewis. You know they don't want to stir. Yeah, that it. guy's like a fucking he he he's takes a, a movie, actor. He's a movie, yeah. He takes a movie like every eight years. Because yeah. people keep offering him shit that he doesn't want to do, and then finally he's like, oh, this looks good. I'll play fucking the, that crazy fucking cowboy in uh, that, that, was that New York movie, you know? Uh, he was in that crazy, uh, what is it, guy, Kings of New York? I don't even remember what it's called now. Oh, oh God. Um, Gangs of New York? Oh, Gangs of New York. That's right. Yeah, he's, he's a fucking he, great actor. He transforms. Is. He really does. I mean, it's like... You that's know, the best thing I ever saw. I knew there was a movie of his I like. I, that's a that movie's fucked up. I always yeah, wanted to up. see him in a Tarantino movie. 
Like, I always thought, like, I know Tarantino's doing, there did some movie about Charles Manson that's coming out. They just dropped a teaser right. for it. I didn't see it. I, I didn't see it. It's um, hitting, uh, but I thought about Leo. the idea yeah. of like, Daniel Day Lewis playing fucking Charles Manson, <laughs> going into method acting mode, like, ah, you gotta call me Charles. Like, <laughs> just being all fucking nuts. And he's like, just like banging people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just fucking nuts. It starts a cult. <laughs> Danny, you don't have to After the that. movie's over, it's like, all right, guys, the cult's done. Thank mm-hmm. you. Yeah, it's been a good film. Like, Every portrayal of Charles Manson in a, in a show or a TV movie, um, he's always, he, he's just always fucking all the time. He's just like... He's always messing with the interviewers. Oh, uh, yeah. I always feel like, like... It, or or my, used to. My friend says I did that one time. He, like, I did an interview, I forget with who, and uh, the, the, the guy asked me something, and I... And I just looked at him, and I asked him the same question back to him. Because it was something stupid. And Chris is like, he, my friend goes, he goes, like, I would never think to do that. Like, I would be thinking of an answer of something I don't, you know, want to answer. Like, yeah. you kind of just kick it back to their fucking court. Like, I don't know. I like There's um, some famous recordings of Lou Reed. I think when he landed in England or something like that in the 70s. Have you heard those? They're hilarious. Dude, Lou Reed's, yeah, he's fucking relentless. And uh, if you just listen to them, that's just every remark he makes is just both cunning and funny and kind of biting at the same try time. And I almost thought Lou Reed was a dick. He I was know. kind of a dick, but he's hilarious. And, I think and what, what is musician. the quintessential Lou Reed song? Most of his songs are overrated. Mr. Waldheim. Uh, there's, there's thought some... Underground changed music forever, man. All right. <laughs> Let's back up the fucking pretentious bus for just one second, Michael Stipe. Jesus Christ. All right. I like the song Rock and Roll. Um, okay. I Hang I, around. Dude, he's got <laughs> some fucking songs that are awesome. Exactly. I just think he's a little overrated. I think that I the think songs that people overrated. really like from him are overrated. I think the songs that people don't know from him are fucking genius. Hmm. Like, I always think of Lou Reed and the Velvet Underground almost like a musician's band. Like, yeah. You know, like it's That's what they say about fucking Steely Dan, and they fucking suck. I mean, <laughs> Steely Dan is great for reference, isn't it? Isn't that the, the whole thing? Like, that's one of the albums that's engineered, like, kind of perfectly. As, as, Aja, or whatever, Aja, yeah. It's, it's the... I have a, My buddy Brian Wexler's, like, in the bag for the record thing, and trying to find the perfect sound. Uh, and that record is always regarded as. Do you know what Glenn Danzig professes to listen to on radio show? Like when they ask him, like, "What do you listen to lately?" You know what Danzig listens to now? No. What? You're gonna shit your pants. Abba. Shut up, <laughs> dude. No, um, that's what? what he says. I, I, I shit you not. Abba says, um, that's is, is an engineering miracle, and their their harmonies are amazing, and their songs are goddamn catchy. Like I'm thinking of Waterloo right now, and I can't get it. Like every time I drive in Byron, there used to be this place called Waterloo where they used to have shows. Waterloo Village. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. And I went there when I was a wee child. Right. Did you go to the village or like to see a concert? Oh, I went to the village. Yeah, the village. I watched street. a guy fucking I don't know. You know, like shucking corn. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what the fuck they were doing. S- some bullshit. Your parents made you. I don't know. I, I, no, oh, like Jody from Canada dragged me to that place, but I don't know. I, I make the most of it and just, I just post for goofy pictures. Think about women in like you know hoods, like you know sweeping with like a broom made of sticks or something. Uh, like, and they probably pay those people to stay in character. But what was my point? Every time I pass by Waterloo, that goddamn Ava song comes in my head. Also. Uh, Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols always said that he stole a lick from an ABBA song, what? but I can't remember. No, Steve Jones, right? Steve Jones, Steve Jones. Yeah, yeah. He stole a good lick bass from a, player. Uh, what's that? Was that the good bass player? No, I thought it was the guitar player. Oh, was it? Oh, I don't know. I forget. I don't know. The, the Sex Pistols were a goddamn blip. You know, the, I don't. I, Johnny Run has been. Like cashing in on that fucking. Oh, Johnny one Rotten is. For I years. love him. He's hilarious. He's oh, just he's such, such a cunt. Dick. Yeah, that's yeah, why I love him. He's just such a dick. Yeah. That's why he's great. Yeah, because he, but he's a goddamn phony. He no, he acts like any 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 uh, any punk rock band that made any money off of anything are assholes. But the thing is, the Sex Pistols. Um, Susie Q, Susie Q, and whatever, um, and then uh, Billy Idol was in a band called Chelsea because I read Billy Idol's book. All of them were backed by clothing stores in London. Oh, yeah. They were all sponsored. Yeah. So fuck you for being sanctimonious. You well, were fucking. People sponsored. say the same shit yeah. about Billy Idol that they say about fucking the Sex Pistols. It's like 
But Billy Idol still... never made any qualms about wanting success out of this because he right. had no future in, in England in the 70s. You're right. And he fucking just kept going when the rest of his band, when Gen X just imploded. Yeah. Because they were all a bunch of junkies. But he, uh, but, well, so is he, but it's the same he, thing. He was a functional junkie. That's the, yeah, and that's just the way it kind of was. Yeah. Like, I don't I mean, know. I, I have nothing but respect for Billy Idol. I, mean, like, I, I like the Sex Pistols, too. Uh, it, they have great songs, but yeah. I just don't think... I think the Ramones were far more significant. And I even think, historically, when you look back, 100 years from now, when they look back on the punk rock you know, movements and genre, you know, and they're intellectual about it, I think Green Day will remember more than the Sex Pistols. Uh, I don't disagree with that. I really do. And I think no, Green Day has a better catalog, a longer catalog. Be and, and, yeah, but Green Day would never be remembered more than the Sex Pistols because... There wouldn't be a Green Day if there wasn't if there a Sex Pistols. Like, I, I a, disagree. If there wasn't a Clash, if there wasn't a Sex Pistols, if there was never a punk scene, there wouldn't be a Green Day. I'm, I'm, not say, I'm, I'm just saying there's still a punk scene, but whether the Sex Pistols were there or not... What do you think about Green Day and the Clash, then, if you're going to say... Yeah, if, they, if the Clash didn't the Clash exist, would, there'd be no Green Day. But no, no, you think the Clash will be more remembered than Green Day? They are critics, darlings, but you know, like all those critics are going to eventually die. Um, yeah, but does I that? Mean, we're talking a hundred years, so you really got. But does that stop like new people from coming in and listening to that and being like, "This is what the critics say," you know? Like, uh, it's. it's I don't know, it depends on how we get information in the future, but I mean, look, Springsteen. Like, Ali's reading Springsteen's book, and when I get my daily briefing, a coaster in the ocean. <laughs> Springsteen fucking loves Sandy. the Clash. He loves the fucking Clash. He's like all about the Clash. So that kind of says something. If a musician's musician, to go back. If like mimicry is the highest form of art, I feel like anarchy in the UK has been covered by so many bands so many times. Like how many people have covered Green Day, man? I think um, the Sex Pistols is to punk like. Uh, I'm not saying Deep Purple great. is to metal. All right, what? they have their smoke on you the know water. What's funny, you're not gonna have bands covering Green Day and getting popular for it until Green Day's dead. Yeah, true. I don't know. Uh, there's some uh, cover bands at the class bar that really no. pack them in. No, I don't think so. <laughs> High anxiety. No. What's that? They they changed their name from Jersey Panic and now they're High Anxiety. Oh, okay. I wasn't going to call anybody out. Oh, no, I'll call them out because they're horrible. They're, they're like... <laughs> they were nice kids. Yeah, they're they, nice. Were, they were really cool to get. It's, called the, music, it's called the music business, not the music friends. <laughs> uh, we're not making any money, so all we have is friends. <laughs> not with them playing. We're not. <laughs> Great drummer. Decent guitarist. Decent bassist. Unfortunately, none of them can sing. Right. All right. Yes, my they they lack vocals and and they don't really play together. Objectively speaking, like they don't seem to be a unit. Like if I couldn't, so play it could be a throw together situation where they just jump on stage together and yeah. But then why they are they really rehearsed? Why? Why? Why would you do that? Why would you subject people to that? And then the worst part of it is like I'll watch those guys come and play right, and then. Uh, like they'll they'll come they'll play their girlfriend stands right here with a camera so you can't tell that like there's fucking twenty feet of empty space behind them yeah takes their fucking video then they just leave yeah and the next band comes up and it's like a great band it's like a cover band you know like we had this cover Did band they, they, they were leaving dude they fucking leave every time every time I ever mix them they always just booked after and it was funny because the night always got way better after like it's like. Wow, I wish they stayed and watched five minutes of this and maybe absorbed some of it by osmosis while hating it because that's what's cool. The kids I did, I thought those guys stuck around, but I, I wasn't like overly friendly with them. But. It's like if you really want to be a musician, hang out there and fucking look at other bands. What Which are they brings doing? me to my asshole of the week, even though it's not the end of the show. It kind of is getting there. All right. So there's this dude. We're just going to call him Cecil. Okay. Cecil? We'll call him Cecil. Cecil. Um, he um, is he. He was involved in the in the open mic group called Sticks and Stones from Hawthorne that I was I was involved with and met a lot of good friends there and 
which ultimately led to a, le- a bunch of gigs. So I love those guys. But there's a guy in that in that mix. He's this old man. So he's hitting on people at the bar. He was always looking at my wife's ass. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so he, um, hey, oh, she's got on, it. Man. I mean, like, <laughs> I get to go. You know, so anyway. Oh, yeah. So um, he's been kind of a fuck turd lately. He had some health issues. Got his friends to all raise money for him. So instead of spending on his medical bills, he bought a fucking guitar for himself. Shut up. And then my wife asked him to come to the show just casually. We're going to have fun. You, all, you know everybody that's going to be there. And he's like, I ain't going to your fucking show. I only go when I'm playing. What a fucking <laughs> asshole. Wow. And then posted on the 68 Mathematics page that you should um, you should get rid of the drummer and get a girl. And then Dan Peacock, and this is, where, this is what I love Dan Peacock for these situations, because he's like, I don't know you, but fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> there are days I hate Peacock and there are days I love Peacock. That you go, dear Peacock. You nice. go. Nice. But um So Cecil is the asshole. Cecil is the asshole of the week. And Cecil. I know people listening will figure out who I'm talking about. I know my wife knows who I'm talking about. Cecil. But um if I see him at an open mic, I don't know if I'm either gonna just like be a real dick and just stand in front of the stage like this, like Motorhead fans used to do that back in the back in the seventies, like when the opening. When band Motorhead band. wasn't playing. Yeah, they, <laughs> they would all do, and they'd have their Motorhead patches. Like we're disrespecting the cover band. The guy who shot, um, the guy who shot Dimebag Daryl, wouldn't go into the club because he's like, I ain't seen no fucking local act, you know, like wow, fuck that. I'm really? only. Like, yeah, right before, because that's what the doorman said. Because that was the last thing I think he said to anybody before he Holy shot Dimebag. Holy shit! Dimebag. What yeah, an that's asshole. Crazy. Yeah, I mean. I might be. I'm not embellishing, but no, yeah, but it's something to that. Something like that. It's, it's in that ballpark. I never heard that before, but I don't yeah. know that much about it. But like, I don't know. Like disrespecting. I don't, I don't know. So I'm, I don't know, I'm just gonna play on my fucking phone. You ask me how I did. I'm like, I'm not paying attention. I don't listen to people who don't support. Or, I don't know. Should I just not say anything? No. Um, I mean, what do, how do I? How do I handle? Is he, any good? For, to, to handle is he like, good or are you just nice to him? Um, he's. Uh, better than average. I would just neg him. Um, like, what, like, he what does he, Bob Seger very well. Does, what does he do not very well? Uh, oh my god. What the, um, he fucking butchered Stray Cat Strut. See, I would tell him, like, uh, I liked Stray Cat Strut the first time I heard it, when it wasn't fucked up by Brian Setzer. <laughs> or something. Like, I, I would just be, like, a cunt to him, like that. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> yeah, be kind of. Yeah, it, by the way, I'm having like a fucking Stray Cats summer. I'm gonna see Lee Rocker, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna f- fucking see the Stray Cats in AC. The 40th. Cool. The 40th. Oh, that's awesome. That's and it's, it's it's at that fucking um, it's at that casino that used to be Revel. That's now Ocean. It's three something. letters or no? It's I o- thought that the one. Oceanside Reserve or something. I don't know. OSR. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. They're, they named one. I think that's like three letters. I thought that's what uh, Ravel became, but I could be wrong, and that could also be like nine years ago. You know that that place Ravel had had to, had a cool like whiskey bar inside. Like you paid, but like you could get flights of shit. That's I only go to Borgata. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. I don't deal with the stripe on the boardwalk. <laughs> yeah. no. I, I used to hang out there, and I used to hang out at the Trop. Oh yeah, that's those are on the ass end of, of AC. Yeah. Like Borgata, all you could do is walk to Harris. <laughs> no, I like the adventure, man. I like, I like. I used to go to Showboat. Showboat's where I saw Jack White play Black Jack, and he gave me his fucking fear face, and I just walked away. He just yeah. gave me his kind of fight face. I'm like, all right. I respect the artist, and then I went. Dude, he beat the shit out of the guy from the Von Bond. Oh my god, he did! And that happened right before that, that incident. And that's what I was thinking. I was like, when he when he made that face, I was like, remember what he did to the Von Bondi's guy? <laughs> what's, what's sad is I have two of the Von Bondi's records. I love the Von Bondi's. I think they're great, and I always think it's funny too because he got in a fight with the guy from Black Keys for and like for the, he took his kid out of school to get him to school together. Yeah, and he was like trying to fight him and shit. It's like. He also said something snarky about the Foo Fighters. Like he was having technical difficulties at a show, and he's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not the, I'm not the freaking Foo Fighters, and have three guitars to back me. I'm by myself up here." So the Foo Fighters, as cool as they are, they play a fucking. They just they, they they put up a they put up a video of 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 a monkey playing the drums. It's like this is the true secret behind the Foo Fighters sound. It was something absurd. Like I like that. I fucking love. Yeah. I love the fucking Foo Fighters. I don't know. Some people have a problem with Dave Grohl does a great Christopher Walken. Oh my God! Foo Fighters. The Foo Fighters. Yeah, because Christopher Walken. 
fucking has to wear to stress the, yeah. the syllable. And he's like, I like that Christopher Walken thinks of that. Like, I always thought that was just Christopher Walken's way of interpreting words on a page. I didn't ever consider that he really thought about that, but apparently he does. You know, like, it's like a fucking thing. And he always, I, I saw an interview with him actually not too long ago where he said, like, he grew up in a place where a lot of immigrants uh, just, they were his neighbors. And so the way that, in a way, like, when you, when you hear, like, an immigrant person it doesn't speak English natively, say, like, speak English, and they, they're, like, thinking of a word, like, that's kind of the way that he just thinks about English and, and mm. acting, I guess, and it's, and it's funny, like, when I listen to, like, my old Cuban coworker, like, he would always say shit, like, oh, you see that girl? Look at her ass. And then I would always, everything he ever said, if I said it like Christopher Walken, oh, you see that girl? Look at her ass. <laughs> like, it fucking just, it was, like, perfect. Like, mm -hmm. I realized, like, when he, when Christopher Walken said that, I started listening to more people that English is not their native languages. And, like, mm -hmm. I, I got it. Like, I realized, like, kind of what he's There's doing. kind of a cadence. There, he's definitely a cadence. Uh, but he's just doing it, like, <coughs> regular. <laughs> yeah. It's it's re he's there was this period of time. Well, all right, first he was like a big thing when they did Deer Hunter, and then there was this period of time where he did nothing, and then all of a sudden he just kept popping up in all these like movies in the nineties, like Wayne's World, and Tr he was great in True Romance. Oh yeah, dude, he was fantastic in True Romance. No, that he, was almost the perfect movie. Dude, he did the Dead Zone. Yeah. That oh, that's true. right. He did do. The, he was the guy in the Dead Zone. Yeah. Dude, the Dead Zone is one of my favorite. But I, what I'm saying is, he kind of fell in a little bit of obscurity through the eighties and I had a resurgence think, in the nineties. I don't think it was obscurity. If you like sci-fi movies, he did a lot of weird sci-fi movies. He did a lot of weird like <laughs> horror yeah. things, and he was great in horror. And sci-fi. I don't know. If I'm being unfair to the guy's no, career, I just, I, I, I just I think, think he, like... I think there's a lot of, like... And he also... He does movies that he, like, likes the script. And it might not be a movie that anybody looks for or ever watches. But he did, like, a movie, Kiss Toledo Goodbye. I've watched so many fucking Christopher Walken movies. Mm -hmm. He did Kiss Toledo Goodbye, where he plays, like, a mob boss with... Like, I think Michael Rappaport probably was like, Hey, Chris, like, could you do this movie with me? Like, we need a mob guy, you know? Like, and yeah. it's... <laughs> yeah, you know, like, he'll just show up and fucking... Like, I, I don't think that... I think that he takes roles, like, that he thinks he'll have fun with. Like, Clem and... Uh, Joe Dirt. Oh, yeah. You know, like, <laughs> I'm talking yeah. to my guy all wrong. Like, yeah, the tone. Like, I don't like, I don't like the tone. Yeah, like, he's just fucking, he takes these, like, roles that are just these weird, uh, they don't even, they don't have to be lead roles. Like, he could be in a movie for, like, 20 minutes and people are gonna remember, that, you know, the, I, I put this watch in my ass, you yeah. know, like, the whole thing, <laughs> like, that whole fucking shtick. Like, yeah, Christopher Walken's in Pulp Fiction. People know Pulp Fiction as a movie that Christopher Walken's in, but it's not a Christopher Walken like movie, no. but yeah. he's so fucking... Well, that's what Tarantino was great. Like, he took a lot of great actors and put them in little bit parts yeah. and told this out-of-time... Pulp Fiction's an achievement. I don't know. I think I'm going to take down the poster and move it to the rock and roll room because I don't think I need it in my living room anymore, but... Pulp Fiction changed the way I thought about movies. Um, well, as, yeah. a, as, a, as a storyteller, you yeah. must have been intrigued by the... Yeah, not only that, but I think the style was really unique at the time, where he kind of had this kung fu movie, 1970s, spaghetti western, kind of punk rock thing all mixed together. I thought that was really cool, and it came at a really cool time. That's what I was going to say about the Sex Pistols before, is they were just kind of in the right time and place, I think. And the and right they kind look. Of, yeah, in the right look, and they solidified yeah. punk rock. But uh, that's why people think they're iconic. I don't necessarily think they're music. I think The Clash is a much better band. Actually, The Clash is one of my favorite bands, and I think Joe Strummer is an amazing songwriter. Um, His last solo was fucking amazing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Look, I, I love girl. The Clash. Um, one, of, one of the greatest live yeah. albums I ever heard was 1980 Shea Stadium, where they opened for the Hill. Oh, yeah. Like, it's, oh, yeah. The clampdown on there is better than the album. See, version. that's the thing. Think about yeah. that. The Clash opening for The Who. Yeah. That's... This generation and that generation, and I yeah. could see why one would. The audience hated them apparently. Yeah, and it was yeah. raining, and the audience was miserable. But anyway. I would think, but I would think in my mind that sounds like a thing, like ah, you know, like 
the sex pistol, uh, the sex pistol is like far out from from the hood. Like I would never see a sex pistol's who gig as like a good idea. But like right. the who and the clash, it's like not. I, I it's not that dissimilar really in the in the grand scheme of things. Like one's a little more grandiose and one's a little more fucking. I feel like in the box. Like I feel like the clash is a little more. But they're probably singing about straight the same forward. kind of. But yeah, the experience energy and, and I would think about like the the energy and shit like that. Like that doesn't seem like a bill that would be that weird to me. No, I, I think that bill works. But I never, I, I never knew that's who they fucking played with it. Uh, my my thing with the punk rock is like you know it's kind of like uh, with the with the hip hop it's like New York versus L A. But look, uh, England had its merits, but I think. It was prompt up, and I think New York was more DYI. They, they weren't propped up. The only person that was supporting them was fucking Hilly Crystal, you know, and feeding them awful chili and whatnot. Well, and girls. What's that? The whole thing with, like, all the New York guys, like, every... They all just had, like, a girlfriend. Like, that was... The, oh, oh to, yeah, yeah. The, the, the Sunset like Strip guys pulled the same shit. Too. Yeah, it's like they all. What, what I'm saying is, like, like they weren't sponsored by a fucking clothing store. All those girls that wrote books. <laughs> but I'm just saying, the Ramones weren't sponsored by a goddamn fashion sh- store. You know, like. But does it change, like, the quality of songs that they wrote, whether they were supported or not? I, I understand what you're saying, whether it's, like, what we think of today as, like, punk rock is kind of more like street level grassroots rock and roll of the people and stuff like that. But think about this. But does it change like how I think the sex was more about look than um, substance to some degree. Attitude. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, yeah. I, I, I think I, I think that but I mean it was part of a package of entertainment. And look, with John Lyon you know, that record is great. Right. It's just but in the grander scheme of things, punk ran away from them and I think, think about I don't this. think he's as big of a deal as he thinks he I is. I thought about that's something all right now that's interesting. That's like okay, like do you think any of us really know what it's like to be like punk like think about the Ramones they lived in the fucking lower east side of Manhattan yeah during a time when you were lucky to not get stabbed on your walk home <laughs> from the, the, the dead boys got stabbed what 17 times Ooh. some shit yeah, does I mean like it was <laughs> just as they were gonna record a record it's a fucking it was a fucking crazy place to be right? yeah so yeah, the city was burning in 77 yeah they did all this shit they paved the way they were the trailblazers like for sure we're lucky enough to be able to hear that shit See the guys that I regard the Ramones more than I regard. See the the guys that came out of it alive, right? We could see them. Yeah, we could go see uh, Cheetah Chrome or fucking whoever. Like they'll play around here. Right. We're lucky enough to have that, but we're super lucky to not have to have lived in the Lower East Side to get our point across. But I think in a way, it's like those dudes are the real deal. Like. They would look at us and fucking think we're all pussies because it's like, oh, I grew up in the suburbs and then I had enough money to get my own apartment, so I did, and I've, you know, like, I, I live on my own and I, my life's not... It, it was a struggle, and it's kind of a struggle, but it's not a struggle of, like, I'm going to go outside in front of my building and get fucking stabbed by a guy with a, a broken bottle, right. you know, for fucking... The five dollars in my pocket, like that had to cultivate something that I never. If that never existed and there was never that world, I don't know what kind of music I would make now. You know, like if there was nothing for me to like listen to and be like, "This is fucking awesome," right? What would I do now? That's what I think about. And like, but you have to keep in mind that no matter what social class you're in. You have your own set of problems. For sure. Uh, but would I want to listen to a problem about a rich lady going out on a yacht and running out of gas? No, probably not. Mm-hmm. No. I'm not saying one to one, me. One is a far more interesting. Yeah, but no, but a rich woman who's trapped in a loveless marriage and murders her husband. Now that's a song. Well, that's a song called Wives with Knives. I already wrote that. Oh, fuck you. You always beat me to the punch. Tell <laughs> you, mold. You can you can do better vocals on it though. Yeah, all right. Well, there you go. Challenge accepted. Um, yeah. What a fucking dad. <laughs> but I, I'm just saying, like, you know, my I don't know. My my, my sister kind of put things in perspective because, like, she has some stepkids who 
I always thought are kind of out of touch. And, like, they have, like, real super duper, oh, my God, my dad bought me a crappy car and not a Lexus. You know, and, and her dad knew Sister. knew that she was going to crash the is car. Her, is her husband older than her? Much, yeah. Okay. Her husband's, like, just under my parents' age. Oh, shit. <laughs> Um, we've had our differences, but he is ultimately he's a great guy, and we always can talk about music. He, he played, he, nice. you know, he's one of those dudes that like, you know, he had a highfalutin job and didn't like the corporate world anymore, and took a buyout and started buying guitars and listening to Jimmy Buffett, and eventually started teaching business. Nice, very smart guy. Um, um, I never really um, gelled with the. With, with, with his kids, but they're, they're polite, at least, at the very least, they're polite. Um, but, like, I, I don't know, I made an offhand comment early on, and I said, Ugh, what problems like, could those kids possibly fucking have? Because I was fucking struggling, you yeah. know, working two freaking TV jobs on two different sides of the state. I lived in Fairlawn, I drove to News 12 in fucking Edison, and then drove all the way to fucking Fort Lee to do a shift at CNBC, and I was failing because I wasn't catching on because I was so fucking tired. And there was a day I woke up in the middle of the afternoon and I didn't know what day it was or time it was or if I was late for a job. And then the next day I overslept and I was supposed to be at a job. Like it just, it got bad. So I was going through a time and I made this offhand comment like, yeah, what problems could they have? I was just like, no, people have problems yeah. in different circumstances. For sure. So, but I don't know. Did we solve the, uh, the wage gap in this country? No. Will we ever? Wages have not been going up. No, but I mean, like, all right. So I guess that brings you to. The, I mean, well, how much time have we left? I don't want to get into social. Over, actually. All right. Should we just go? Do you guys have like an asshole or any final thoughts? Like, yeah, I have an asshole a week. Go for it. Me. Why? Because my boss uh, is overseas and I can't understand her sometimes on the phone. <laughs> so when she says, "Send this to me" or "Send this to Mia." <laughs> Oh, yeah, you it's it's very uh, tough for me to understand what she's can you say? Mm-hmm. You should just be like, are you saying M E or I don't know how do you spell Mia? M I A? Yeah, well, no, you know, it's I listen. I know it has to go to this person, so my my yeah, answer is kind of like, well, she wants it, she needs it. It's pretty much done. Like, you could just send it to both of them. Well. Yeah, no, I, I did. And I, or do you not like Boys and I got to get yelled at. Um, oh. And then I, I had to send Mia back like, no, it's not approved yet. I jumped the gun. I'm sorry. Like, please don't use this yet. <laughs> and then uh, I had to update uh, one caption in the video because I used A instead of our. Oh, God. So, yeah, it was an interesting day. But I'm the asshole of the week. <laughs> for me, at least. Who's your asshole of the week? Uh, I am also my own asshole of the week for being uh, an idiot, for being a doormat, for being impulsive, for, I don't know, um, all of these reasons. You know, <laughs> being impulsive is not your fault, Phil, because, you know, Wilson Phillips once said, mm-hmm. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think it. I want to be impulsive. Right. Reckless. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's catchy, too. Oh, it's just making you do reckless things. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, but this is not your fucking fault, dude. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. No, you follow your heart. Follow your heart. Listen to your heart. We out. We out, baby. Man, he's calling to you. Love you guys. Love you. Bye. <laughs> Good. From the bottom Lindsay, take your get to bed. Presentation of Cult of Contempt Podcast. If you have any questions or comments or want to hear your band on the show, just write us at Cult of Contempt Podcast at gmail.com or check us out on Instagram or right here on Facebook. On behalf of Paul and Phil, I want to thank you for listening. We'll see you next week at 8.15. I'm Jim Cook. Transmission out.